2023 Volvo customer states that was an accident all right so today we're gonna push a side sway me and Bob right Bob uh, this truck was in a uh, minor accident it was hit right in front of the pusher axle it's a pusher axle uh, and it was hit right in the axle and uh, pushed the side sway into the frame so as you can see here the truck was hit here took out the uh, DPF converter completely so we have an all-new converter took out pusher axle actually busted the hub and everything on this side the entire pusher axle was replaced. One of the things we're going to talk about is gauge placement and how to read these gauges, okay? Now, these are beeline manual gauges. Uh, they take a little bit of sight. You do have to have some good sight, I guess. Uh, but they all line up with each other. So, point of reference uh, from gauge to gauge is what gives you the in and out of the frame. All right, so as you can see here, if you line the front gauge up with the back gauge, right? You can see it right there how those two other gauges are not in line with the front and rear gauge. If you move out here, the next gauge back is not in line with those two gauges. So you know that that is the furthest point out. Let's talk about gauge placement. Inside of this needs to be touching inside of the frame rail on both sides. You need to be at the same line marker on both gauges. Now, as you can see with our back gauge, this is the next gauge. We want to be slightly in front of where the front tandem is uh connected to the frame okay now this gives you a point of reference from here back these two now your next gauge needs to be slightly behind the front the rear side of the front spring hangers front gauge needs to be at the front spring hanger now you can be uh on the frame up here but if you have this large uh cross member like this you can hang it on the bolts themselves to actually get a because these bolts should be exactly the same spot on both sides so now let's talk about the side sway. The side sway is just pushed, the, the center of the truck is pushed over. So what we're gonna do is, is we're actually gonna hook it up across the back here off of this stand. Now, we don't wanna just hook this rail because we, if we pull this, we might actually cause damage to this cross member. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around this rail and tie these two rails together. In the front here, we're gonna take this dick plate off and we're gonna find a cross member. Because you wanna be close to a cross member. So there's a cross member under the exhaust here, and there's a cross member right here. Now we need to be pulling slightly more here than back here or front up there. Now when you're bidding these jobs, frame time might be a down, but where you can bring up <clears throat> more time is actually taking stuff off and on. That's where a lot of this stuff comes from. On this, we're gonna hold it on this side, but we're gonna have to take off this front bumper corner. So let's see if we can get this done today. A three quarter Allen. Right there. Three quarter Allen. A lot of people don't understand how simple this is to actually take this off. Let me get over here and uh, put that little thing right there. Undo this. Yes. Take your three quarter Allen. There's a bolt back here. Right there. Thing comes up. Set that out to the side. We don't damage that. Now, we have to hook to this. Now, in the front up here, it's a lot harder to hook on because we need to hold this thing over. So we can do this one of two ways. We can uh, put a hook on the bottom of the frame here and here and actually pull it back to the frame machine here and just chain it down. Or we can use our machine, run a chain all the way around the cross member and actually pull up against the frame and the cross member to hold pressure here. I prefer to actually go all the way around so that way uh, I don't have any issues with trying to roll the bottom of the frame out. So just so that way you don't tear the gauge. Uh, it'll come off really easy. Shouldn't be real tight. do this uh, just over 45 years experience so what we want to do is, is we want to chain this together so that way we re re remove some of the stress on this uh, 
cross member here because I have buckled them before and it's not not fun. So There it is, right there. Right here. Right here. Take this hook, which I've made out of a big piece of plate. Right. I'm gonna stick it right there. Bam! Pull it up, put the chain. Here we go. Now, with the chain on there is gonna keep the rail from rolling out and keep from pulling so much on. It's gonna pull both sides. Let me take this hook down here. <clears throat> Bob ain't on with me right now because obviously it's kind of hard to carry Bob and do all this. We want it to be level, so we got to move our pin down. That's for lighting purposes. Now we get to move the other one. All right, so we're going to chain. Oh, simple. Goes in there, right here, one side or the other. Bam. All right, back to the toolbox. Yes, here. Nope, not there. Ready to go. I guess we can use one of these. This is still at a bad angle, so we're gonna drop it down some more. We gotta stop tight lunch. Foam died, so we're gonna go ahead and tight lunch. Avocado time. That's good avocado. So the thing about these chains being level, why wouldn't we need them straight? We need them pulling straight across, right? Both front and back. The back needs to be straight across. Right here, as you can see, we got these cool little hooks. We hook the frame. And we, well, I was gonna wrap a chain around here, but we can't wrap a chain around here because drive shaft's in the way. So we're gonna see how this thing pulls and watch our frame and make sure everything is going good. Ain't nothing left to do now but to bend it. We're slightly past about a half a pin, maybe less, and we want to be almost a full pin past. But what I'm going to suggest we do is, is we're going to take everything off this truck, back it off, drive it around the block, and bring it back to see if it goes back. So we'll hit you with the high-speed montage so we can get this done a little quicker.
we go. Let's zoom in on this bad boy. Bam, look at that. Straight up, everything, right in the line there. All right, so she's ready to go. Now we're gonna do a three axle alignment. Put all this stuff back on. Roll her on down the road. That's another episode of Bending with Bending. I'm glad you guys watched it. You watched this far. Thanks for watching. Check the next one out.